Well, we're up on Red Lake this week, Upper Red Lake, and it's early ice. See a crack coming open right here, but we've got probably seven, eight inches of ice, early ice, and kind of the deal up here, you know, we get different wind directions and stuff, and this ice can shift, so you got to be really careful and diligent. Fish with dusty minky, and when you're trying to get out to seven, eight foot of water, maybe six feet of water, then as you can get out further at nine, ten feet of water, there's just these big flats out here, and so it's a lot of drilling holes, a lot of moving. Happy to be here. This is just a really, really fun place if you love to catch walleyes. You just get wore out, and that's what we're here for. We got a front that moved in, so they're pretty finicky. Oh, wow, nice one. Nice 18 incher. Beauty. A little cold and windy out, but they're still biting up here on Red Lake. Now, Red Lake is a, is a massive, massive fishery in northern Minnesota. And, and the thing about Red Lake is you have Upper Red Lake, then you have Lower Red Lake, and Lower Red Lake is located within a reservation. And so non-tribal members aren't allowed to fish Lower Red Lake. And so it's almost like there's this big refuge. And what's also interesting about Red Lake is that Upper Red Lake is predominantly shallow. Lower Red Lake is where all the deep water and all the structure is. And so it's almost like two different lakes that are connected. And so a lot of times in the springtime or early ice or whenever you have high water, you know, Upper Red Lake fishes really, really well. And so Red Lake is a place that freezes somewhat quickly. You know, it's shallow and it usually provides some really good walleye fishing opportunities at early ice. That's what Red Lake is known for is early ice, aggressive fish. A lot of times you're on Upper Red before Lake of the Woods or a lot of other destination fisheries. There we got him. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I better pull the transducer around here. Fish is dogging. Oh yeah, look at their nice walleye. Get her started. Oh, come on up here. Back up. There we go. All right, look at that. And this is just a fun place to come. Early ice especially, you know, before the first of the year, Red Lake just fishes really well. Full of eaters just like that. I mean, look at that growl, that pose. Give that fish its freedom lucky fish because that fish would be a perfect eating fish and it's kind of a finessey deal I mean these fish have been normally he'd come out here and find some pretty aggressive bites but I don't know if just the weather there's a lot of a lot of shiners in Red Lake this year but these fish are just off a little bit and so it's been kind of a kind of a dead stick deal or I'm just using a little spoon and kind of a one-two punch I've got a dead stick with a plain hook and then I've got a small spoon I've been working. So on these little spoons, what I've been doing is I've been just going to the full middle, and I've been pinching it back about right past the dorsal fin, just so it kind of floats horizontally. You still have that air bladder in there, and then it can kind of roll around and wobble around, but it's been kind of a finessey bite. The bites are light. Whenever we've had great fishing on Upper Red Lake for walleyes, you know, we were, we were somewhat by ourselves, you know, and so that's the first thing I look for. Where's everybody at? And if there's nobody over there, that's where I'm going, you know, get by yourself. Because the thing to remember about Upper Red Lake, it's really shallow. You don't have a lot of ice. These fish spook fairly easily, you know, even wearing ice cleats, dragging a fish house, all those things can really spook fish. And so you get out by yourself, get to the edge of the crowd, get past the crowd and let things settle down. And a lot of times that's probably one of the most consistent formulas that I've seen for catching walleyes on Upper Red Lake. Here he is. Oh, oh yeah, there's a good fish. Oh yeah, look at there, look at there. <laughs> that is what we're here for. Oh, come here. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> that is one angry walleye. Look at that. Just barely hooked in the beak. That fish just showed up and ate it. That is just a gorgeous fish. You know, you're going to catch some nicer fish. I mean, I would say Red Lake 
is a place where you can come and catch big numbers of say 15 to 19 inch fish but you're going to get a few fish over 20 inches you know maybe up to 24 25 inches at times but that's just a stocky beautiful fish all right I'll let that fish go here get her back in the water there she goes and that wind ain't letting up <laughs> it's probably blowing 30 miles an hour out here I mean it is just howling but you know what you can sit and run traffic and catch fish like that I'll sit out here the reason I'm pinching it further back I find that on on tougher bites sometimes if you pinch them further back like halfway back or further they can still roll around on the hook they're still alive you'll get a little bit of movement but that air bladder stays intact and it, it'll float it'll float horizontal spoon will be up like that and that middle will be floating horizontal and it just seems like they can just grab onto it a little easier suck it in a little easier when it's off and a lot of times when I'm jigging you know I'll use a graphite rod with a pretty stiff tip but you know what if you're missing fish or they're just coming up and just pushing it and bumping it where they're not thumping it you don't you don't you can't tell if you have a fish on until you lift the rod up and you just feel a little bit of weight that type of bite is where using these these dead meat rods where you have that really light tip can really shine or that rod tip will just will just drop a little bit on you and set the hook There's a nice one. Wow. That's about a 17 inch Red Lake walleye. It would be perfect to release in the grease. But I think we'll let this one go. <laughs> nice fish. That was awesome. We're in about eight to 10 feet of water here on a, on a big flat. And seems like these fish kind of move through in, in little wolf packs and uh, yeah when it gets slow in the shack just go out and fish a few holes and you can usually get a few to bite and I found today they're just biting really light so just a plain jig with me with the full minnows doing the trick yeah when Jason called me to go we knew the conditions were gonna be very cold and windy um, but sometimes you just you don't have a whole lot of time and the fish were biting so it was extremely windy I think we had a really strong west wind uh, it was blowing a 20 to 30 miles an hour gust so it was brutal but we stuck it out you know we had the the fish houses to stay warm and we'd go outside for a little bit and then come back and warm up but yeah, wind or cold, I mean, sometimes you just have to go for it, and it, it paid off because we caught a lot of fish. There he is. Oh, yeah, look at that. The dead stick strikes. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to... Whoa, look at this. Look at this fish. I was wondering when this was going to get going. Nothing wrong with that, look at that. Oh, come on. Here, it's so tricky to get started. There you go. There we go. <laughs> you know, and tell you what, it's probably typical. You're probably like me, you got a tackle box full of tackle, all kinds of shiny lures. And they're fun to look at, they're fun to buy, they're fun to use, and they catch fish. And there's so many times though where just a plain hook <laughs> saves the day today the spoon has been on fire but uh, there's a lot of days where that's the ticket yeah great fish there's a great average size So this fish house here, you can see it's got a little bit different frame system. This is the Legend Thermals, a Shields exclusive house, but you can see it's got the XT frame and basically what that is is there's a bracket that comes off this top frame and it adds a lot of height. And so it's really good for longer rods if you want to stand up, it just puts a lot more room up to the front of the fish house. And so, you know, realistically, you know, in the past I used a lot of one-man shelters, 
but a lot of it was for panfish with shorter rods. And a lot of times when I'm walleye fishing, I like to spread out my dead sticks. I like to use a little bit longer rod, like maybe a 30 inch rod or even a 32, 36 inch rod. With this XT frame, it just gives you a lot more room up to the front of the house. And so really opens up and adds a lot of height and it also adds a lot of fishable space on the ice. More room up front for your electronics, your heaters, you can use longer rods. You don't have to worry about your rod hitting the, the the fabric of your fish house when you set the hook and so there's a lot to like about this new XT frame design. There he is. Look at that. You can hardly peel it off the bottom. There. <laughs> there we go. They are rolling through. That's the thing is, I mean, we drilled some holes, we bounced around a little bit, and once you can just narrow it down where you can just hunker down and run traffic, if you can get lucky enough where you can just sit in one spot and these fish just keep rolling through, that's fun fishing. That's when you don't have to work at it anymore, you can just enjoy it. When it's this cold and windy out, it's important to be fishing with mono. So your line wants to freeze up and it's just a lot easier when you use monofilament. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes one. There we go. This feels nice. Oh yeah, that's a better one. It's real tricky with this uh, shallow ice they can get off easy Ooh, there's a nice one so you want to make sure you don't let that line rub on the side of the hole Whoo -hoo, look at that beautiful red lake walleye it's windy it's cold but there's not many people out here so we're taking advantage of it and they're biting really good that's a really nice about 20 inch fish and we're gonna let him go that was awesome let's get another one just keep hole hopping here grab another minnow and keep making them bite you know so you get up on upper red lake you know and you have the mentality you got to move 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 and you got to drill a lot of holes well i'll tell you what this time around you know, we had 30 mile an hour winds. It was brutal. I mean, it was it was a deal where we showed up at the resort in the morning. Everybody's like, boy, you guys are going out fishing? <laughs> I guess so, we're here, you know? And, uh, and every once in a while, I think to myself, boy, I hope I'm smarter when I'm 60 years old, you know? Thinking, what are we doing, you know? And uh, that's the kind of stuff that I did when I was 18 and looking back, thinking, boy, what was I thinking, right? And here I am, 47, and I'm still doing that stuff. But we get out there, you know, and, and sometimes you get lucky with fishing, and that's maybe why we do the things that we do at times when the weather's bad, but, uh, you know, get out there and we weren't, it would have been a lot more difficult to move around a lot. And we happened to, you know, just land right on the fish, you know, and, you know, had some help out of the resort doing that. But we were able to set up and just run traffic and just sit in one spot all day. And I'll tell you what, you know, sometimes you have to move a lot, but some of the funnest days of fishing I've ever had are days where I could drill a couple holes and, you know, sit in one area and there's just enough fish there's just a flow of fish coming through enough where you never get bored and you just sit there and, and pick away at fish and, and that's the whole thing is if you're by yourself and those fish aren't getting caught before they get to you you know and you get on that flow of fish where even if you can mark you know have a couple of waves of fish come through every hour that can end up being a great day of fishing you know and so luckily 30 mile an hour winds blowing snow brutal conditions luckily we were able to just hunker down and we just had enough fish moving under us where we never really had to move much. That was a saving grace of the day. You know, if we would have had to move a lot, it would have been a whole different day in 30 mile an hour winds. Oh. All right. There he is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> they pull out drag. Oh yeah. Oh wow, that's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. Look at that. Oh, 
Isn't that cool when you can see through the ice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> that minnow was just going crazy. <laughs> Gorgeous. What fun, fun fishing. That is just beautiful. One two punch. Pretty classic way to catch walleyes. Jig with one rod, dead stick with the other rod. Some days the dead stick makes her day, some days they both catch fish. Today the jigging probably caught more fish, but you know what? Every fish you catch on that second rod's a bonus. And tell you what, I'll take that all day long. All right, we'll get her in the water here. There we go. Using a fathead like we are here. Which I think fatheads are really an underrated minnow. Everybody thinks they have to have shiners, and granted, there's times where shiners can be the ticket, but fatheads, they, you know, they, they swim hard, they're tough, and they're small. But what I like to do is right behind the head, in the side of the minnow, is I just like to nick the hide. Just like that. You kind of see where that, that hook is. Just, in the, just go right through the hide, behind the gill, in the side of the minnow. What I find is you don't hit the backbone at all, you don't hit the spine, and when you put these in the water, they just really swim around hard. Kind of see there, just that hook kind of pulls on the minnow and they just swim hard. But the other thing is the way that hook is positioned, a lot of times these walleyes will grab it by the head and they just hold it, where that tail is sometimes sticking out of their mouth. And when they grab it by the head, you can almost set the hook immediately. You don't have to wait, you don't have to count to 10, you don't have to count to five, you don't have to do nothing. That rod tip dunks, just lift the rod up to set the hook. There we go. I wasn't even paying attention. That thing came out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Nice one. Woo. <laughs> Nice one, Red Lake Walleye. Got it on that jig with the full minnow. That's a perfect 17, 18 inch fish. Be great for the pan, but we're letting them go today. Someone else can come, come and catch this bad boy. Nice. That was a real nice fish. Get a fresh minnow and try to get another one. I like a little bit bigger of a minnow with this technique. And then the key is to not pierce it through the brain and kill it, you know, to like just kind of go above its lips. So the minnow, you know, wiggles. And when that fish comes up, sees that tail wiggling, they cannot resist. I mean, there's a couple things I like to do when walleyes are off, where the, where the bite's tough. Either a, a, a small, tiny tungsten jig with, a, with an XL hook on it, with a minnow head, as, as simple as that sounds. I've caught so many walleyes on that. During the times of day when the fish are off, or just for whatever reason, if the weather has the fish off, that is, a, that is a silver bullet that could catch walleyes. And the other thing is just a small dainty spoon with a single hook instead of a treble hook and then hooking half a minnow so that it just kind of bounces horizontally. Those two things are kind of my, uh, you know, my arrow in the quiver when, when walleye bites get tough. When, they, you know, when, the, when, the, when you have the type of bite where a plain hook and a split shot starts out fishing lures. You know, those are a couple of things that I break out that, that really catch fish. And so, we kind of anticipated that. We started seeing it ourselves once we were out there where these fish would just roll up and just didn't want to chase, didn't want to lift up off the bottom, you know. And um, once we figured that out, you know, we started catching a lot of fish. But, you know, that's the whole thing with fishing is don't ever make up your mind before you get out there, first off, and be willing to do what you have to do. You know, just don't force a lure down a fish's throat that isn't working. Try one thing and a couple of fishes come through and it ain't working. Try something different. Keep turning, you know, 
going through baits, going through presentations. I'm not talking about changing colors. I'm talking about big changes, you know, going from big to small, going from aggressive to passive, you know, make those big changes to try to figure out what those fish want. And if you can do that, usually you'll find something. If you're marking fish, usually you can find something that those fish will eat or respond to. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah. Oh, our fish is all wrapped up. Oh, come on up. Here we go. <laughs> this is getting silly now. I don't even know how many I've caught today. And I guess that's kind of the lure. That's why people come up here. Oh, and there's another one there. I got fish flopping around all over the place. Oh, look at that. Oh. If I was a little younger, I'd go after that. Well, maybe I'm gonna have to grab you if you're that uh, foolish. I'm gonna have to. All right, that counts as a double, right? Tell you what, if we don't catch any more today, what a great way to end. A fabulous day of ice fishing on Upper Red Lake. <laughs>